Today, we're going to begin discussing our first real application of derivatives to real life. Now, a lot of what we talk about will be particle motion, which seems abstract, but does apply to people and cars and moving objects. So, first of all, the motion of a particle at time t is usually denoted by x of t or s of t is usually what they call it. And it's measured in linear units, feet, centimeters, inches, miles, yards, whatever. Um, the velocity v of t is... rate of change of position with respect to time. So how it's changing over time. Now, we have already done a little bit with derivatives. We know that derivatives are a rate of change. So V of T is actually the derivative of position whichever way you write it. So, when V of T equals zero, when the velocity is at zero, that means the particle is at rest. When V of T is greater than zero, that means the particle is moving, typically they say right, sometimes forward or up. When the particle is less than zero, the particle is moving, when velocity is less than zero, the particle is moving left, sometimes backward or down. When the sign of V of T changes, that means it's gone from positive to negative or negative to positive, meaning particle changes direction. Now we can get a good picture of particle motion on your TI-84 graphing calculator, also on the TI Inspire if you have an Inspire. We'll have to talk in person so I can show you that. But on the 84 4 or 83, change your function to parameter, and in your y equals, put your equation as the first x1 and y1 make a t. And t's will show up when you hit that variable button next to alpha rather than x's because we're in parametric mode, the PAR. So put it in parametric mode, make sure you put the equation here, and the variable there. And it'll end up looking something like this, and typically what this means is at zero seconds, it was at the origin. At one second, it was at one, two, three, four. At four seconds, it was back at the origin, and then it moved to the right for the remainder of its course of travel. So, let's do an example. A particle is moving back and forth with an equation s of t equals t cubed minus 3t plus 2, where t is greater than or equal to 0, and t is measured in seconds, and s is measured in feet. Find the velocity at any time t. Well, v of t is equal to s prime of t, which is going to be 3t squared minus 3. Now it says find the velocity after 3 seconds. Well, our velocity after 3 seconds would be the velocity with the 3 plugged in. So 3 times 3 squared minus 3 gives us a velocity of 24. Now velocity means it's moving. Our units were feet per second. The velocity after 3 seconds would be feet per second. Part C, when is the particle at rest? Well, if you notice earlier on our notes, it's at rest when V of T equals 0. So we're going to take V of T which is 3t squared minus 3 and set it equal to 0. Add your 3, divide by 3, t squared equals 1, so t equals plus or minus 1. Minus 1 doesn't matter when we're talking about time because you can't have negative time, so our answer is t equals 1 second. When is the particle moving in the positive direction? Part D is when v of t which is 3t squared minus 3, is greater than 0. Well, we know time starts at 0. We know
know that it's equal to zero at one. So we're going to have to check some critical numbers. If we plug in a 0.5, we're going to get a negative value. If we plug in a 2, we're going to get a positive value. So when is this particle moving in the positive direction? That would be when t is greater than 1 or from 1 to infinity. Now, E said draw a diagram to illustrate the particle of the motion. The motion of the particle. To do this, we need to take into consideration some things, some time that we know. First of all, we need to know where it started, and we need to know where it was when it changed direction. Because this particle, according to Z, and our number line here, moved left for the first section, second, sorry, and then it turns and moves right for the remainder of its course. So at zero, we plug it into the original to figure out where it was. So if we plug that into t cubed minus 3t plus 2, we get 2. When we plug 1 into that same equation, we get 0. So let's talk about this path. And typically, they use a number line. So there's 0 on it somewhere. And we kind of label our time as we go. So it started at 0, or it started at 2. Well, so it started over here at 2, and it did that when time was 0 and it started moving left. Technically, all of this movement would be done on the number line, left and then right, but you can't see what happens because you're drawing on top of each other the whole time. And at time equals one, it's at zero. After zero, if you notice from our number line above, it turns and begins to go right. So then we know that the particle moves right and keeps moving right. Now, to find the total distance traveled in the eight seconds, we have to take into consideration where it started. Some of these we already know. Where it was when it turned, and they want the total travel distance in eight seconds. Well, we know after one second, all of this particle does is continue to move right. So we just need to know how far it gets at eight seconds. When you plug an eight into the position function, our original, you get 490. So, from here to here, it traveled two total feet. From 0 to 490, it traveled 490 feet. And combined, when we add these up, moved a total distance of 492 feet. So, 492 feet is our answer. Now, this says if velocity and acceleration, when they're asking you about speed and they want to know if it's speeding up or slowing down, you have to consider both velocity and acceleration. If velocity and acceleration have the same sign, meaning both positive or both negative, then we know it's speeding up. If velocity and acceleration have different signs, then we know the object is slowing down. So if one's positive and one's negative, then it's slowing down. So this asks, when is the particle speeding up? Well, first of all, we need acceleration, which is equal to v prime of t. So our acceleration is 6t, just 6t the derivative of the negative 3 is 0, so 6t. And we're going to look at the same number line. We know, 0 and 1, that our velocity was negative here and positive here. Acceleration, on the other hand, is 6t. So when we plug in a point in this section between 0 and 1, we're going to get a positive value. When we plug in a number bigger than 1, 6 times a number larger than 1 is also positive. So, they want to know when is it speeding up. Speeding up means both 
positive or both negative at the same time. Well, that happens here. So we know that our particle is speeding up from 1 to infinity or when t is greater than 1 second. Finally, some business and economics. The cost t of producing x number of items is found by the equation c of x equals 10,000 plus 5x plus 0.01x squared. The marginal cost is the production level after producing x number of items or the rate of the cost per item after a specific number of items are produced. The marginal cost is c prime of x. So, it is also the predictor of the cost of making that next item. So, first thing they want us to do is find the marginal cost. Well, marginal cost is c prime of x. So, in this case, it's going to be 5 plus 0.02x. Now, this says find and interpret c prime of 500. So, we've got to plug in the 500. And we end up with 15. This means it is $15 per item. And this is considered the rate at which production costs are changing. after the 500 items are produced. Now, that means to make the 501st item is probably close to $15. Not necessarily exactly 15 because this is the slope at 500, which may or may not touch the curve or be close to the curve at 501. So, how do we find the 501st item? Well, we take the cost of making 501 items and we subtract the cost of making 500 items. Cost of making 501 items is 15,015.01. Cost of making 500 is 15,000. So the cost of making the 501st item is actually $15.01 very close to the marginal cost, which was 15, a predictor of what the next one was probably going to cost, but not exactly, because it actually cost $15 in one cent.